Um, the Housing Urban Development Zoning Committee will be called to autumn. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Davis. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Coder. Alderman Boyd. Here, sorry. Thank you. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Muhammad. Here. Alderman Martin. Present. Alderman Narayan. Here. Alderman Evans. Chairman Boyd. Present. President Reed. Here. Here. Alderman Davis. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Evans. Six present, you have quorum. Thank you, quorum being present. Uh, I will entertain a motion on approval of the minutes dated June the 8th, 2021. I move to approve the minutes of the June 8th, 2021 HUDS committee meeting. I'll second. second. Hey, it's been moved in a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Davis. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Coder. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Alderman Evans. Chairman Boyd. Present. Aye. President Reed. Aye. Six aye votes. Alderman Cohn is present as well. Okay. Got it. Thank you. By your vote, you have approved the minutes for June 8th, 2021. Um, now we're going to move into committee discussions in reference to board bill number two. Uh, we're going to have some conversation presentation by President Reed, and then we're going to have committee discussions about how we're going to move forward. So right now, uh, President Reed, you're up. Right. Thank you. And uh, thanks to all the members of the committee. I really appreciate you giving me this time to talk about bill number two. We have a lot of work to do on board bill number two to, br to bring uh, relief to people, um, you know, amidst COVID. But it also gives an opportunity for us to transform our city. You know, our goal is to expend these funds in accordance with the Rescue Act, American Rescue Act. Um, to provide funding for immediate needs in our community that, that were caused by the pandemic and related financial crisis uh, that, that's being left in this aftermath to address longstanding pre-pandemic in, inequalities and the lack of opportunities and to make long needed capital investments in our neighborhoods and provide a path of growth for our communities that may benefit the current residents and attack and attract new residents to our city. You know, um, I've, I've had a discussion with the chairman uh, about, uh, you know, process moving forward. First and foremost, I think it's absolutely essential that we get this board bill passed uh, before we go down uh, for summer break. So we have a lot of work to do across the next two or three weeks to get that done. Um, the Board of Aldermen, uh, uh, HUD's committee, I'm hoping that uh, the chairman will uh, host multiple, multiple committee hearings. Um, you know, we need to host committee hearings to reach out to the citizens, the everyday citizens uh, in the city of St. Louis, and to do it in a way where we attract and get a very, very diverse, uh, you know, uh, pool of opinions, right? Uh, we know that some organizations are very adept at packing meetings and sending information out to their members to have, you know, 50 or 100 people show up just on one subject matter. I think we have to manage that so that we also get other opinions factored into it because uh, oftentimes uh, we will make it through that list, but a lot of people that have differing opinions or differing uh, informations or solutions to some of the problems that and challenges the city, they don't 
have an opportunity to be heard. So we want to hear from everyone uh, and, and get as many uh, uh, diverse opinions as possible through the door. Uh, you know, uh, I think it's also important for us to uh, reach out to, you know, financial institutions, you know, small businesses, uh, our clergy and uh, religious organizations, nonprofit and groups throughout the city of St. Louis. And, um, you know, I think it would be, you know, great if we can have uh, meetings set aside for uh, some of those targeted groups so that we can get that information through the door and uh, have the best board bill possible and uh, the most comprehensive expenditure of these funds possible. Um, you know, we need to also recognize the digital divide that exists within our city. And we need to set up a plan uh, so that a, in a process so that we're not just uh, soliciting comments through online portals or just through people being able to attend our hearings to give us information, right? We also need to um, set up a hotline number, right? So that, so that people can call in right, and leave information. Uh, we need to have a general email so that they can drop us an email, right? Um, I'm also reaching out to the local radio stations to build partnerships with them so that they can help us get the, uh, get the information out to, you know, the regular citizens within the city of St. Louis. And as much as possible, I think it's important that when we look at just, you know, our citizen input, I think we need to uh, assure that the citizens that we're hearing from, when we get out of, you know, past talking to financial institutions, small businesses, clergy, and nonprofits, but when we get to citizen input, I think it's essential at that point to assure that the citizens that we're hearing from are citizens that live in the city of St. Louis, that have a stake in this, uh, that can, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, that have been that, uh, really need to see a transformation happen through this process. And so, you know, that's kind of the general sense of where we're going, where, where I think we need to go. Um, we will have an online portal set up through the Board of Aldermen. It will be available by, by tomorrow morning um, and begin to push that out. Uh, we have been waiting for the mayor to finish uh, her review process before getting going on this board bill because I thought it would be very confusing to have, you know, two things, two entities going at once. So that, uh, and then it's, it's also, I think it was important for us to get an idea of, of what some of the findings would be from the uh, group that the mayor put together. So we now have that. Uh, we have everything we need to get going. So, um, you know, again, I appreciate and thank uh, the committee members. And um, also, I'm going to tell you thank you in advance because it's going to be a lot of hard work and a lot of meetings coming up to get through this uh, in the time we still have uh, left to get through it. Uh, but uh, I think some great things can come out of this. I think we can see a transfer. We certainly should. Uh, see a transformation of our city through through it, and um, uh, the meeting today I asked uh, for from the chairman, uh, and he indulged me just to just to outline you know the process moving forward, and also to hear from the uh, committee members, um, you know any additional thoughts uh, on uh, the process and the things I just talked spoke to you about. Uh, you will receive in a document. Uh, a little later today also uh, and it, it may be modified based on some of our discussions here this morning but you know the general outline is what I just outlined to you again the legislative process and timeline we want to uh, hear from our citizens uh, we want to do it in a way that uh, we uh, we um, get to as many diverse opinions as possible um, so if there are 100 people signed up on one subject matter, uh, you may not hear from all 100 on that exact same thing. So, uh, but 
you know, we, we need to assure that we get as many diverse opinions as possible um, and provide them an opportunity to send uh, and to communicate their ideas, their perspectives, and their uh, desires uh, through, you know, various different means, right? Um, and then, of course, before we take a vote on the bill, we will have uh, community input on whatever the final bill is before it comes out of committee. So people will be able to also weigh in on that. Um, and, and again, uh, regular citizens, financial institutions, businesses, clergy, nonprofits, uh, we want to hear from them and other groups uh, throughout the city of St. Louis so we can have a comprehensive bill that can transform our city. Hey, thank you, Mr. President. Um, and again, as the president said, um, we want to be as collaborative as possible with the committee. It's important to get input from the committee about how to um, make this a really good, transparent, open process uh, for the public and get as many diverse opinions across the city as possible. So let's start uh, from the top with our committee members to you know, get input on um, how do you see the process working? Um, what makes good sense for you and we'll start with Alderman Davis. Did she join us yet? Yes, sir. Okay, Alderman Davis. Uh, I have very few comments at this point. Uh, for me, it's, it's just critical that we do have an extremely open process. Uh, sometimes we create things to appear a certain way, but uh, then when you delve in, you realize that the average person that would be affected by these uh, suggested uh, initiatives uh, don't even know that we're even thinking about it, uh, would like to have an opinion. And most of them really have some good uh, suggestions. And so getting down to the grassroots, I think is very critical. But I also want to see us do a dual process because we have people that are in crisis right now. And we do have some funds that could be used along with other organizations that have funding and dealing with uh, people needing to pay their rent and utility bills. Uh, we need to have that as open and as available with knowledge for people along the same uh, time. So that's a parallel process that should probably be e even stronger so that people don't end up uh, being homeless because we do have funds available uh, and that to me is where we're lacking uh, right now and so we just got a lot of work to do we need to do it collaboratively uh, one of the reasons why the board of ENA was structured the way it was was so that all branches of government would work together and they would come out with suggestions and or policy recommendations to come through the legislative body that would help the public. It's not one entity that can really help. And so having those three together, we would hope that we can really move this city forward, have a collaborative process, a timely collaborative process, uh, so that our citizens will definitely uh, have the services that they need and also have the input to what those services will look like. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, all the woman. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if you will. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, I want to uh, thank you all the women uh, for outlining some of the things you outlined. Um, uh, also, the note that uh, the city of St. Louis right now, we do have somewhere in the neighborhood of $8 million from our last allocation of uh, COVID funding that's sitting in an account that can be used for rental assistance. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, the rental assistance uh, program being impacted by the board, uh, you know, on this process, and it's absolutely essential that the legislative branch move forward with this process um, and, and, you know, solicit community input. We have a process. We, we by law, have to follow also. Um, so there is roughly $8 million sitting there right now that could be used for rental assistance. Thank you. Um, Alderman Cohn. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, I too want to ensure that we're uh, moving through this process as quickly as possible uh, with the, you know, collaboration and partnership across, you know, city government and also ensuring that we have um, input from our citizens and, and how they believe these uh, funds should be prioritized. I am uh, a little uh, flummoxed. I, I emailed the uh, president and his office uh, and yourself right before the meeting, um, you know, because, you know, it was my understanding that we were supposed to have a uh, presentation from the mayor's office this morning with respect to board bill number two and the process that they've undertaken, um, which I believe the president's office was invited to participate in as well. Um, and, you know, I think it, it's a little discouraging. I understand, you know, President Reed said that he uh, didn't want to confuse people, but I don't think that there's any confusion in working together. And, you know, if there are people who are, you know, in the financial sector or in the nonprofit sector or in the clergy sector, why wouldn't uh, uh, President Reed, uh, since you, you're the sponsor of the bill and before us, why wouldn't you have encouraged those uh, communities or, you know, interest groups to participate in the mayor's process so that they could, you know, we already had 2000 citizens of the city that have participated in this process to date you know, why wouldn't you have encouraged them to participate in that process and get them engaged? You know, because at this point we are starting to delay direct funding to our citizens. Uh, uh, Alderman, um, uh, the Board of Aldermen has a process that we have followed. We are the legislative branch of city government. So, uh, you know, I don't understand why you or anyone would have a problem with the Board of Aldermen doing its job. So um, I think it's absolutely essential that the board move through the process. Uh, and, you know, um, I appreciate the work that the mayor's office done. What I've told you, I also uh, spoke with the mayor early on about her process, right? We sitting on a, 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 a group uh, of 30 people, uh, hand select 30 people that the mayor uh, selected to look at that, um, look at the recovery funds, I thought would be number one, it would be inappropriate since I, I am the you know, president of the Board of Aldermen and also it would be inappropriate considering the fact that I'm the primary sponsor of board bill number two. So we notified the mayor's office uh, on that moving forward and uh, they still just didn't take the name off the list. So I can't explain that. That's not under my control. What is under my control is assuring that the Board of Aldermen follows a process that engages the citizen, that gives us an opportunity to deliberate on an important issue and takes into account the diverse opinions, not just across the members of the Board of Aldermen and all the communities that they represent, uh, but the community leaders themselves and the community people who live within those communities. Uh, the mayor is one elected official. Everyone, you know, every member of the Board of Aldermen are also elected to represent a, a body of people. And I'm also elected to represent a body of people. Uh, as the legislative branch of government, we have a job that we must do. And this board bill is the process of doing that job. Um, uh, probably that if we wanted to get it done earlier, uh, we should have, um, one of the things that could have happened is that the mayor could have finished her process early. I mean, they just finished their process and just announced it last week. So uh, we are, we're moving along with our process in a deliberative fashion. And uh, we will work to get this done before we go out of session. With these decisions are huge decisions that we have to make. So I think, uh, it's absolutely essential that we do it in in, a, in accordance with uh, with the uh, with our chartered responsibility. I not to get antagonistic here, but I have been down here for twelve years. I am very familiar with our legislative process, so I don't need a lecture on that at the moment, President Reed. What I do need is answers with respect to how do we deliver relief to our citizens. Oh, so oh. I really, I am taking exception to that because you're very condescending at the beginning of that statement and basically trying to explain to me what our legislative process is when I've been down here for over 
a dozen years at this point in time. I am very familiar with that. And further, I will say, I have not seen one board bill down here that you have ever you know, sponsored that we have gotten more than 2,000 uh, pieces of feedback from citizens on. Never in 12 years have we seen anything like that from this legislative body, even during firefighter pension reform, during minimum wage, during the smoking ban, we had hours and hours and hours and hours of meetings, as you're well aware, at the committee level, we had those meetings and those meetings would sometimes last for six hours and multiple days. And we still didn't have that level of input. And so when you're talking about partnership, yes, you might be the sponsor of board bill number two, I was the sponsor of minimum wage, but I still worked with the mayor's office to try and engage our citizenry in that process. I tried to partner with your office in that process as well. We, you have the same electorate as the mayor's office. Yes, you might be the head of the legislative branch, but you still have the same constituency as the mayor. So don't lecture me about the legislative process. I really find that very disrespectful, but to further the, the dialogue and the conversation here, what is your time uh, frame for coming up with uh, this process? And then for the board bill itself, when do you expect for it to be passed out? Um, uh, first, let me start by saying, Alderman, uh, you know, I'm sorry that you saw that as a lecture, but to me, if you go back and review the tape uh, later, you can see that I was directly answering your question. No, you weren't, President Reed. What you said was, as you should know, Alderman, you know, we have a legislative process to go through. You were lecturing me directly on the legislative process. That's what you were doing, Lewis. Don't try to play shenanigans with me. I don't have the time or energy for it this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm not, and it's, and it's clear that you have, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 and it, it, you're, it Lewis, don't play those games. Please okay, time out, time out, time out, time out. One thing that I appreciate when we have committee hearings is that we respect each other for their titles. Please do not address the president as Lewis, address I, him as I, President I, Lewis, I, President I, Reed, and all other aldermen address each other as aldermen, just out of I, basic respect, please. I do apologize for that. I, I okay. Yeah, but, in there. Uh, Sorry, yeah. Mr. Chair. But, uh, you know, as I, as, I, as I said earlier, and, and I've been here since 1999, so 20 years. Uh, so, you know, and we have never, seen a time like we've seen now, where we've had every single sector of our community, every single person within our community, every single person on the planet affected by one issue, COVID-19. Uh, so we will see larger community input than we've seen in any other thing before, because this is an unprecedented thing. Uh, we have never seen a half a billion dollars come down from the federal government to allow us to begin to do some things to transform our city. So we will see more community input than we've seen on anything ever. The firefighters pension fund, some of those things, those things weren't, thing, weren't even close to this issue that we're talking about here, which further underscores the importance and the criticality, criticality of the Board of Aldermen doing its, its job and following its process. So um, uh, I have no idea why anyone would have a problem with the Board of Aldermen moving forward with its legislative process. That's what I fully intend to do. Uh, the mayor's office, as I, as I uh, noted, we will hear, I think it's important for us to hear from the mayor's office and their findings and factor into our discussions moving forward, which we will do. Uh, but to, uh, uh, to for, forego our process because another process happened outside of this branch of government is something that I think, I think would be great, gravely uh, a grave error on the part of the board. And it's not something that I, uh, a way that I know I'm willing to go and I appreciate the chairman and other members on this committee understanding the importance of us doing our job. So. Okay, so again, Mr. President, the statement that you just made made me feel like you think that I'm not trying to do my job. So you're saying other members of the committee and the chair 
you know, are willing to go through this process. I am willing to go through the legislative process. I know what the legislative process is. So, but again, you're not answering my question either. I specifically asked you, what is your plan for this process? And what is your time frame for one, establishing that process and going through that process? And then two, for passage of this board bill. Okay, let me, before the president answers that question, let me say this, Mr. President, respect please. Okay, so the purpose of this hearing was to get input from the committee. Okay, Mr. And, Chair, and, that is. Right, I got you. I, I, I'm with you, but I'm just, but I'm just wondering if after we go all the way around, that we could all agree to the suggestions that have been offered. I mean, because like right now, the president may have a certain idea, but I'm hoping that other committee members' input make it a better idea. Is, would that be okay? Or otherwise, he can ask your question, but I just want to interject and put that out there, Alderman Cohn. It, thank you, Mr. Chair. But like for me, I, I need to have an understanding okay. of what the president's process is going to okay. look like and have okay. better input into that process. Yeah, yeah Mr. And, president. And that's the, the pro, I'll go back to what I did in open. So again, from the top down, if, well, if you- Mr. Mr. President. I, I don't need you to repeat everything you already said. What you did not mention, but what you didn't mention in that presentation was your time frame. No, I did. I, I, mentioned, process. I mentioned time frame at least twice. I said that we uh, want to get this board bill out. And I think it's absolutely essential that we get this board bill out before the board goes on uh, summer break, which would be what, mid July. That's so the goal. That's a goal, but That's what are the specific time frames for the process perspective and then getting the board bill passed? All of that, right. getting the board bill passed uh, determines how much time we can spend on the front end in hearings and the like, right? I also outlined to you the various different groups and entities I think that we should reach out to. I think that we should assure that we have good citizen input, right? Uh, by uh, you know, uh, you know, finding ways to reach out to our citizens to get them engaged in a much different way. I think we should also find a way to uh, have uh, engagement with our financial financial institutions, uh, small businesses, clergy, and nonprofit groups, right, and some of the educational institutions, right. So I think we need to get all, I think we need to get as much of that stuff through the door as possible with the time we have in the committee hearing uh, as we formulate what the final bill will look like. Uh, and then moving forward from there, if we want a third read and finally pass before, uh, before we go on the summer break, uh, that pretty much tells you how much time we will have uh, in hearings and alike, but we're, but uh, what I'd like to do again, like I said at the term when I finished talking, I said I wanted to hear from the committee members uh, and wanted to hear from the various different committee members uh, their thoughts, right? And uh, any other suggestions of organizations, groups, or entities we should uh, work on reaching out to, uh, but. Uh, what I'm uh, not willing to do is forego our process for anything that takes place outside of the Board of Aldermen. We are going to go through a process here. We have to. I think it's essential that we do. And I'm not refuting that we have our own legislative process to go through, President Reed. But my concern is that we are now on June 22nd the last meeting scheduled for our current session before we go down for that summer recess that you're saying is the goal for you know passing this out is July 16th. I realize that you have the opportunity to call special sessions as well, but you just stated that your goal is to have it passed by the time we go down for summer recess. And so that would be July 16th as it currently stands. And that means that in order to have it third read and finally passed, we have essentially two weeks to have committee hearings at this point in time. And based on what you shared earlier, we don't even have the website up and running to take feedback from citizens that you're saying that we need to do. Yeah. And so, you know, when what I'm asking is in terms of the process, what is going to be the time frame for getting that done? Because we have essentially two weeks if we're going to try and pass it out by July 16th. I'll, I'll, so, go ahead, I'm sorry. 
Well, so, so, yeah, but, but I'll, President I'll, have, has there already? I, I mean, in my ma mind, if this is the plan that you've you know been working on, then we should have that website up and running right now. We should have had those conversations with financial institutions, with clergy, with other community partners already lined up so that we can engage them, have them before this committee, get their feedback, and take those uh, you know points. Uh, whether they be criticism or whether they be ideas and incorporate them into any you know board bill or amendments thereof. And we, to my knowledge, based on what you've shared so far, we don't have that infrastructure in place so far for to support that process. Uh, uh, am, I, uh, am I wrong? Or I mean, have, yeah, have, yeah, you're, have you're, you or your office already done that and you just haven't shared it so far? You're, you're wrong. We have been we have been working to establish that infrastructure. We reached out, some, already reached out to some of the local uh, radio uh, folks for uh, to create those partnerships. After this committee hearing, that gives us the go ahead to finalize those things that we've already established a footprint in. If we wanted more time, uh, um, first off, I think we needed. Uh, uh, when we look at the, the, the time that has already been taken on the outside, there's nothing we can do to, to change that measure. Uh, this board of aldermen has plenty of time to go through the process that I've outlined. Um, and if you have any suggestions about, you know, other than criticism, but if you have any suggestions of, of things that, uh, you know, other entities you think we should reach out to, uh, how do we get more citizen input? All of these types of things. That's the kind of productive discussions I think is needed today, right? Uh, we have, uh, we, we have, like I said, plenty of time to get through this. Uh, the Board of Aldermen will follow a, 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 a structured process to assure that we have good community input and that the views that are, are laid out in that final board bill has encompassed a broad cross section of, uh, of opinions. When, let me break it down even more simply. When is this website that you've been working on or your team has been working on going to go live? We're gonna, have it, we're gonna turn it live 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, okay. Yeah. So do you, do you disagree that, that without calling a special session, we have until July 16th to pass this out. Hmm? We, have, we have until July 16th, if we wanna do it before we go out to break, yes. Which you just plainly stated that that is your goal is to pass that's it out by July 16th. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so, our, it's, our, it's our goal to pass it out before we go out on the summer break. So, which, so, which as it stands is currently July 16th. Exactly. So in order to have it third read and finally passed, Mr. President, mm -hmm. we have how many weeks to go through this community engagement process? Uh, count. Two, by my count. Actually, right. so, I, I, actually when, you, when you think about the fact that in the last week, in the week of July 16th, we can have two board meetings that would end up giving us yet another week. Okay, so three weeks to go through three, three, weeks. three weeks to go through the process. So the website is going to go live tomorrow at 8 a.m. You're going to work with radio stations and others to get community engaged. This, I mean, these are the details that I am trying to understand from you so yeah. that I can have a better understanding of your process so that I can put have more input. I'm not trying to criticize anything at the moment as you're trying to define it. I am trying to better understand what the process is. So I, I'm sorry that that's maybe the way that it's coming across, but I'm just looking for data right now so that I can better understand it. So by the July 16th date, you know, are you planning on passing the entire 500 million or are we just looking at an initial we're, we're the funds that we're going to be passing, you know, what what uh, what are you hoping to pass on July 16th? I don't think I don't think uh, we uh, uh, will be doing the entire 
you know, 500 million, right? Uh, but those discussions are things, those, that, those decisions and, and things will come out of our discussions and our engagement uh, through the process. We also got to set up uh, a meeting with National League of Cities so that the committee members near one can be fully debriefed on uh, the federal act so they, they understand top to bottom what it is, what can come out of it, and things of that nature. So. I uh, may I ask, since you're the sponsor of the bill, um, I mean, typically with, you know, federal funding bills that come in in the past, you know, CDA, SLDC, other city agencies and departments that do report up through the mayor's office are usually engaged in those conversations because they'll generally be the agencies that are dispersing funds and or utilizing those funds um, in their own departments. So during this process, are we or should we expect the mayor and her team to present their findings so that we have a basis for what work they've done and what efforts have been you know, taken to date so that we might be able to incorporate some of those, incorporate some of those things into our own process and own bill? Uh, uh, as, I, as I said in my opening, I think it's absolutely essential that we hear from the mayor and we get the information from them that they collected across uh, their process. Uh, I think it's essential that we do that. So absolutely, I've, you know, I've said that multiple times this morning already. Okay, so can I, I mean, just going to our emails before the meeting then, why was the mayor's office disinvited from this morning's conversation then? When that's, to my knowledge, at least based off of the email that the mayor's chief of staff sent, they were just basically presenting their findings so far. So you, as the sponsor of the bill, would have been able to provide your presentation, your you know your process, your plans, and then we could have also had that opportunity to learn more about what has been done to date. I'm just and you know I I'm I'm glad that you've acknowledged that you know we'll have the opportunity to meet with them. I'm just kind of curious going back to just this morning. Uh Here's the thing, Alderman. Um, uh, what would you do with that information today? I mean, you would essentially we need that information uh, to come in sometime prior to us putting our board final board bill together. Uh, it's information uh, that we will have. We're going to have it in a timely basis. Um, we're not passing a board bill out of out of this committee this morning, so. Why would you, why, I mean, and here's the other thing, you can get online and see every, watch the press conference and get everything that the mayor has said about, about uh, what's in it. Those documents are now out there readily available for, to the average citizen, including members of this committee. So um, we just need them to testify before we finalize our board bill, right? Uh, when we're hearing from other citizens across the city of St. Louis. So um, again, um, I understand that um, you know uh, there the the executive branch is is really working to shorten uh, the process in the legislative branch, and for some reason it's given uh, them uh, quite the heartburn that we are going to engage in a process. But uh, as I has, have stated multiple times this morning, Alderman, we are going to engage in a process. Uh, um, and it is no slight against the mayor or anyone that we engage in the process. It's absolutely essential that we do our job. We are separate branches of city government and we will do our job. And, um, you know, um, I, I don't know any other way to, to put well, it. And again, uh, no one is saying that we shouldn't go through our legislative process. The mayor hasn't said that. Her chief of staff hasn't said that. Her deputy mayor of development hasn't said it. The chairman hasn't said it. I haven't said it. Nobody, literally nobody, has said that we should not go through our regular leg legislative process. Literally nobody has said that. Okay, so uh, you're kind of putting that out there. But I, I'm, I'm more concerned around, uh, you know, they went through their process, and I wouldn't want to duplicate uh, any efforts that they undertook. We, well, Alderman Cohn, uh, President Reed, yes, Alderman Cohn. 
I'm gonna come with all due respect. I'm gonna come back to you, um, so sure. other committee members okay. can can engage because I don't want to just continue right. this back and forth sure. with you and the sure. president because other committee members are are waiting as well. So I'm gonna just move yeah. on, but I will come back the to privilege you. Privilege of seniority. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome, um, Alderman Kotar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, President Reed. Um, we're spending a lot of time this morning, it appears, talking about process. Um, you know, as I guess if the point of this meeting is to talk about what we'd like to see and how we'd like to see this moving forward, um, first and foremost, I readily acknowledge this isn't my board bill, it's President Reed's. Um, and as the primary sponsor, I think he, you know, certainly gets to dictate timing and other things. I think we all recognize the importance of, of getting these dollars to the various departments and getting them, um, you know, put to their intended use to help the community. Um, I would certainly like to hear very soon from the administration, not only about their public engagement and, and the committee that they, they put forward uh, to, to make recommendations. Um, and, and I would like to hear, you know, their proposal, I guess, as outlined in the document they sent this morning. I mean, we got it this morning. We got a 33 page document with a lot of detail that looks particularly helpful. I know it's already answered some of my questions, um, but I go through and hear from, you know, people in the mayor's office and, and various department heads that, you know, that are part of this this uh, process on how they intend to spend these dollars. You know the, what those RFP processes will look like and everything else. I think that's critically important, and I think that's our um, I think that's our prerogative and 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 uh, what we're supposed to be doing as as uh, as a as a board of aldermen. Um, I share everyone's goals to get this done quickly. I would also like to know. I, I know we got a letter from the mayor last week, um, kind of showed saying that there's some real urgency on some of these funds. Um, I, I guess I'm still confused about how some of the ERAP funds, which I think are from a previous tranche, maybe from old CARES Act dollars or, uh, or the, um, the, the money that was appropriated by the federal government shortly, right around Christmas. If there's timelines on those funds that, that needs to get done immediately, that, that rental assistance money, perhaps that should be in a separate bill and we could you know, get that moving through. Um, but I, I do think we need, now that we have a, a concrete proposal, I, I think there's there is a differentiation between the public engagement and the committee process that the mayor's office went through, which I think was was very important. I think it's great that they had subject matter experts and and the public give recommendations on how you know this some of these dollars should be spent. That has happened. Now we have a concrete proposal on how to spend roughly eighty million dollars or so, and I think it's our duty to take some public input as to how those dollars are spent. Now, I don't think we need to belabor it for months. I think a couple of public hearings to take testimony and hear from people about what they think of this concrete proposal um, will suffice. And then, uh, and then we should make whatever tweaks we want to make as part of the legislative process and get it moving forward um, and before, before summer break. And if it requires extra meetings, let's have extra meetings because this is important. Um, that said, I, I, I would encourage, you know, the administration as well. I, I think on both sides, maybe there's a lack of, there's some communication breakdowns that would appear. I mean, I, I, you know, as the chairman of the rules committee, it took me two seconds to pull up our rules and, and, and point out that, you know, a committee substitute comes from the bill sponsor, not from, you know, not from the executive branch. So if they've got a committee sub they want, they need to work with the sponsor of the bill and get it introduced and get it over here uh, in, within our rules. And I don't think that's happened thus far. Um, but I don't think, you know, procedural hiccups should prevent us from having a thorough discussion of the underlying policy and the desires of how to spend these, this money. I think probably 85% of which no one's going to have any objection to, but I think there's some serious questions that, uh, that the mayor's office needs to answer about some of these line items and, and, and what they're intended for, even after receiving the summary document. So um, it's my hope that, you know, very shortly, we can start having substantive discussions about the bill. I think the first step is to hear from the administration and various department heads that they wish to include in that discussion, uh, and then take public comment, tweak it, and move on. Thank you, Chairman. You're welcome, and thank you for your comments. Alderman Pam Boyd. Uh, we cannot hear you, Alderman. 
you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You you put yourself back on mute. Yeah, it wasn't working when she was off mute. Oh. It wasn't working, so I think she's gonna. You want me to come back to you? Okay. Next, we'll go to Alderman. Uh oh, Alderman John Muhammad said he was having audio problems, but he did send something in a chat um, that he asked me to read. Let's see. Please, my opinion on oh, screen. We need to have an open conversation about this critical funding identify the most productive and impactful way to allocate these funds based off the needs of our wards and residents. The Board of Aldermen is the legislative body and we have to be able to do our jobs effectively and a part of our job is packaging legislation together that complements federal funds like these. I want to assure you we are moving efficiently to address this post-COVID era and give resources to the people. While I appreciate the mayor and the advisory board the sole representation for the people of the city is the Board of Aldermen. And I believe that as legislators, we should be deliberating by, we should be the deliberating body along with the Board of ENA to determine specific allocations for these federal dollars. I am hopeful the mayor and the president will package a board bill that best reflects the needs of the city with the input suggestions and legislative participation and community engagement. That is for the record, uh, Alderman John Collins Muhammad. Next, uh, Alderman Martin. Is Alderman Martin with us? I can't see her on my screen. Oh, there she is. Oh, sorry. I thought it was not on mute. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so <laughs> I've sat here uh, listening to um, everyone's comments. And uh, President Reed, thank you. And thank you for presenting this bill. And I agree, it is your bill. Um, you know, we are as much a part of this process um, as the mayor's office. Um, but if we really want to have an open and honest discussion and be transparent, we have to start being honest with ourselves. And I couldn't remember exactly when we were found out that we were going to receive all this money. But I know just from a Google search, March 4th is when um, it was announced that major cities would be receiving these funds. And March 10th is when we found out that the city would be uh, what type of funds and about how much we'd be receiving. And <laughs> we could have done anything. We could have had our own commission. Um, you know, this was a major discussion in the mayor's race and um, we could have had the same meetings. We could have analyzed the same data. And I do think it's important we have our own process at the board. I would like to have some meetings where we have some public discussion, um, but I come from a different form of government in my experience in my career. And if, even if it was a different party, if the governor asked a minority leader um, or anyone to attend a commission or um, sit on a special committee or even come to their office for a meeting, you go and you're present at these meetings and you listen and you participate. And even if we wanted to have our own bill, that's fine, but at least we would um, start off with all the information and have input um, from the get go. Um, we don't have a mechanism for any data analysis at this point. Um, we are running up against a timeline that we're very well aware of. Um, again, I, I would be interested in having some more meetings um, and trying to, I mean, here we are now, and this is the timeline we have. Um, I like Alderman Coder. I do have some questions about um, the remaining funds from the last, uh, the last disbursement. Um, I do think that we probably should have had, um, we, we didn't just find out about this at the last ENA meeting. And I do think that um, we should have had the mayor's office um, at one of these meetings as soon as possible. Um, if they were available today, um, we should have allowed the mayor's office to present. Um, they did Canvas. Um, they used 211 data. Um, and that data actually shows that my ward is in dire need. Um, it shows um, that people will be evicted. Um, and we have to get this figured out. It's our response, just like it's our responsibility to have this transparent process. It's also our responsibility um, to uh, do everything we can as soon as possible because we are facing a looming crisis. And just looking at the data that the mayor and the commission put forward, um, it greatly affects my constituents and I'm worried for them. So I don't really have any questions at this time. 
but it's just more of my input and where I am as a committee member. And I hope we can get this solved as quick as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Um, Alderman Narayan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. President, members of the committee. Um, <clears throat> I, I share, I think, everyone's concern here that we're running, uh, we're running into the June 30th date where we, uh, I guess, anticipate that we'll see the uh, eviction uh, moratorium end. Uh, I, I liked uh, Alderman Coder's idea <clears throat> about potentially uh, splitting uh, into a, a separate board bill, uh, the uh, housing assistance, uh, is that something that you'd be opposed to doing to make sure that we could get that portion of those funds uh, uh, they, out quicker? Yeah, they, we are currently sitting on roughly $8 million of, of uh, rental assistance and mortgage assistance funds, right? The, the money is sitting there. Uh, that isn't going anywhere. And the, that was, we all allocated that with uh, the last round of COVID relief funding. Uh, what we're running into, um, what all of us found out uh, last last week with the mayor's announcement, is that um, uh, uh, the outside entities that we hired to help us review applications, that funding will be going away. So, so the outside entities that helped us to review applications, that fund is going away. We can still use the Affordable Housing Trust Fund and, and uh, their group and, and the people that are, uh, uh, you know, that work for the city to continue to review applications across these couple weeks that, uh, that uh, you know, that it'll, that it'll, that it will take within July so that that won't be a problem. Uh, and again, the funds are there. The other thing that we can do is expedite the, the review of applications right now. Uh, had we, uh, look, if, if, uh, if the administration has known uh, since uh, uh, April that uh, the governor uh, was not going to lift uh, his order that said that uh, some of those funds would terminate at the end of June, uh, they could have used the funds uh, for hiring outside entities to hire more outside entities to expedite the approval of applications. So more applications would have been approved by now. Uh, they still can do that today. Uh, right now in the day, I don't know how many days are still left within the month, but that right now in the day, they can say, okay, we're gonna, we need you all to expedite and approve more applications before the end of the month. Uh, the funds uh, to, uh, the funds that are required uh, for rental and mortgage assistance is there. We're not going to expend those funds across the next three weeks. Uh, we have a entity within city government that can help to review applications today. Uh, we have time before the end of the month where they can expedite the review of applications right now. So all of those things should be being done, right? Um, and it, um, it, it's not something that, uh, that is not coming, right? Um, they have all the resources and everything they need. They can even um, uh, do an interim two or three week contract with one of the outside entities uh, just to keep them going for a couple of weeks while we go through while we go through the process. There's nothing that I, I can't see any like, all of those things that I just mentioned can happen today, right? Uh, without a new board bill, without some of these other things, right? Um, um, but and uh, those are suggestions that we made to them. And, uh, but it doesn't seem to be uh, something that they're moving forward with. And only thing I can think of is because then it just, it, it, it puts pressure on our side to shorten our process on our, on, on, you know, at the Board of Alden. Uh, but all those things can be done right now. All the time. Okay. And then <clears throat> um, I had the chance to review uh, what the stimulus advisory board came up with. And I'm certainly not saying that that should supplant our process. I, I, I don't want to fall down that uh, rabbit hole again. Um, 
but uh, I do think that there are some good ideas in there. Um, and, you know, I think that there's, you know, support for workers, unemployment, healthcare workers. Uh, there's uh, a, a plan uh, to, to increase uh, Wi-Fi access. Um, uh, there's uh, money for the unhoused, money for uh, home repairs, uh, particularly for the elderly. Uh, th there's a lot of stuff that I think is really great and I think could be a great benefit to, uh, to the residents. Uh, is there anything that, well, so first I should ask, have you had the opportunity to review the, um, the, the advisory board's uh, findings? Uh, yes, I have, have, have had an opportunity to review those. I think that, um, uh, you know, like I have said, you know, I think that it's really essential that we uh, engage with that. I think it's essential that we uh, utilize that moving forward and factor that into all our discussions and everything because there are a lot, a lot of work has been done. So we need to, you know, uh, you, you, you know, I think we should um, certainly, you know, encompass that in what we're, what, what we're, 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 we'll be working. So. Is was there anything in there that you think is? Uh, should be a, a, a high priority in, in your board bill or anything that you don't think should be there? Uh, 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 Alderman Ryan, for the sake of uh, dealing with the process, I would prefer mm -hmm. not to talk about stuff that's not before us right now. And let's just kind of stay on, you know, how do we create the best process in order to get these funds out expeditiously? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, will do. Um, so then I guess the, uh, the only follow-up I have there then is what. And, and, and I'll call you up the meeting. We can talk to you. Perfect. Um, so once we get this data in from, uh, from the website, uh, how do we intend to kind of interpret that data and, and move forward with that data? Uh, that would be part of the process that we'll establish here at, at the, you know, at the committee level and in terms of, uh, you know, the best way to, to review and disseminate that, depending on what it is, it could be something development related or whatever, we can, you know, engage with our, you know, development arm of, 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 uh, of the city. Um, you know, I also think it's important that we hear from the Board of Public Service about open projects bring that up I think, you know that's one thing if one you know one thing that I think we should also do because that will tell us a lot about open projects and things like that but it depends on the and then la last question and I will uh, let let the <laughs> process move on um, where did you get kind of the, the framework for board bill two from the, just the, the, the kind of nuts and bolts of the whole thing? Uh, we were looking at the last um, uh, uh, board bill that we did for some of the stimulus bonds. We were also uh, looking at um, some of the framework of what the new proposed bill was going to be. So a lot of this framework we had put together and had it, you know, kind of structured that framework um, before the election. Um, and as a matter of fact, we held off on moving forward with the bill last session, right? Uh, and we did that because we thought it would be important uh, that whoever the new mayor was would have some input. So we could have this structure that you're looking at, that structure, we had put that together and had that, you know, kind of structure prior to uh, the April election for the new mayor. Um, so, but I thought it'd be appropriate for us to, to wait until the new mayor took office and to give them uh, some time to get organized because bringing in a new administration, getting organized, figuring out where everything is, making department appointments, and then um, getting your process started and getting information back from them. So we needed to let all that take place, give the mayor and the new, new administration the opportunity to outline some of the things that, uh, that, that they would like to see and to 
have that in a you know kind of structured in a way where then we could you know consume it and begin working on that platform uh, with uh, with our process in mind. So so that's where and that's where we're at today. Right? So. Okay, and then uh, uh, th thank you, uh, and I, I hope that uh, that we can all move forward expeditiously on this because I know that residents all over the city uh, uh, really need us to act with some urgency here. I think everyone on the committee understands that. Um, yeah. Thank you for your time, Mr. President and Mr. Chair. With that, I'll yield. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, Alderman Evans. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. President. My question is, how soon can we access the funds uh, for our constituents? I know they have uh, concerns for wanting uh, home repair. Uh, this is for seniors as well as non-seniors. So how do they access these funds? Well, once uh, once the once the bill is passed by the board of aldermen and go to the mayor's office for signing, uh, we'll have an emergency order on it so that she'd be able to sign it and pass the time period. I think uh, the accounts and everything are all set up, ready. You know, I think that everything else is pretty well ready, ready to go. Uh, uh, um, so. You know, it just from there, it would depend on some of the departmental processes, right? So if they were going to apply for home repair funding, any, any time frame, uh, once the final bill is signed in the law, any time frame would be based on the processes that that time frame, uh, that time frame takes. Um, we may be able to uh, engage with, with, if there are a couple of key departments, we may be able to engage those couple of key departments and um, uh, uh, talk to them about ways of expediting their time frame for people uh, to be able to get access to funding once uh, once the funding is solidly in place. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair and Mr. President. Oh, I yield the floor. Okay, thank you. Uh, back to Aldo and Pam Boyd. Are you with us? Can we get your audio? Can you hear me now? Yeah. We can hear you. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're echoing. <laughs> oh, you're <good. laughs> One minute you can't hear me, the next minute you hear me double. So it's yeah. you, you sound good now. Okay, I, I'll just I didn't have any questions for the president or the chair. I just had a comment, and so I uh, heard all the woman uh, Martin loud and clear, and it was eye opening because the information had been put out in March, and so I just think we're always behind the eight ball on time, and so I just feel that. The constituents are the one that's losing. We're not losing. People are making it personal. They're, you know, attacking each other. And it's not, it's not that. It's we need to come together to try to come up with a mutual understanding on how we're going to move this to get voted on. And so that's where I'm at. And I just feel like, you know, my constituents as Otto Woman Martin said, are the ones that are suffering. They're the ones that's in need. And we're in a situation now that's never been done or heard of before. We had a pandemic. And so now we're learning and we are challenged to try to move at a fast pace to get people taken care of. So I just ask that everybody look at how we can work this in a positive and not continuously attack each other and point fingers and try to see how we can work together and uh, get this passed on. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I promised Alderman Cohn I would come back to him. Alderman Cohn. Is he still with us? Okay. Um, 
There he I'm is. Here, yeah, I'm here, Mr. Chair. Sorry, my uh, Adobe Explorer is trying to like do some screen problems here to upload a, a new version of it, I guess. But um, I, I, I really don't have any further questions. Uh, I just, I really would hope that as we continue to work through our legislative process, that we are transparent about what our expectations are, what the time frame is for accomplishing our goals, um, and doing so in a manner that's both thoughtful and um, engaging with our, our citizenry, but also making sure that we are moving this, you know, expeditiously because, you know, there are time constraints involved. There are obviously uh, our neighbors, our, our constituents are, are very much impacted by these uh, decisions and want to make sure that they get the relief that they need um, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so here, here's what I want to say again. First of all, thank you to all the committee members um, who ex expressed themselves in a way about this bill that is extremely important. Um, I want everybody to understand and know that you have my full commitment to work as expeditiously as possible. I am very willing and interested in having two meetings a week if necessary. I would like to have a meeting on Thursday evening um, around six o'clock. And we can have, we can start it off with the mayor's office presentation, get a chance to ask them questions. Um, we will take public input but I'm gonna tell you right now, the meeting is ending at nine. Um, so we may not be able to get 200 people to talk, but I do have another meeting scheduled for June 29th. If time permits, we can have more um, conversation on June 29th. I'm also willing to have another meeting on June 30th. So I'm willing to load up and have as many meetings as possible because there is a sense of urgency. And I want people to know that. Um, I'm certainly, you know, not trying to stall anything. I don't think the president is trying to intentionally stall anything, but process is everything. And the Board of Aldermen, we should do our due diligence. We are the legislative body. And um, right now, it seems like there's this crisis, and I'm not sure if it's a crisis. I mean, I'm asking for alternatives. I've heard the president say uh, with the rental assistance, which is a whole nother subject, you know, there's there's an option out there. So um, I would certainly appreciate not being totally rushed on this sensitive topic. I know I've talked to people in my neighborhood who have been almost clueless about what's going on. And some people call me and say, hey, I heard the city has all this money. I need, like all the women, I, I need money for home repair. You know, so uh, I am sure that the mayor's administration advisory committee has done a lot of excellent work. I am really impressed with the report that I received. It has a lot of good stuff in it. Uh, so I mean, there's some questions um, that I, I like to ask as well as other committees have said they have some questions. And um, Thursday at six o'clock, we'll have an opportunity to hope we have those questions addressed. But I am willing again to have as many meetings as possible to make this happen. At the end of the day, this is President Reed's bill. Um, and when he asked for a vote on the bill, we would take a vote on the bill. In between time, we would have as much public engagement as you guys can stand. I'm committed to that. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I appreciate it. And I uh, look forward to a really engaging process so we can uh, assure that these funds are allocated in a way that can begin to transform our city and our neighborhoods throughout the city of St. Louis. Okay. Um, Chairman, the uh, the older woman from the 19th, I think, has her hand up. I don't know if you saw that. I, I, I did not. I, I, go ahead, older woman from the 19th. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just would like to reiterate because I want to thank my committee members. That's why it's important for all of us to have input. Uh, actually isolating this rental assistance and utility assistance out uh, into a process to make sure people get funding. Uh, that, that We should not linger on that past the end of this working day. Uh, we already have contracts with entities that have staff, have sites, know how to mobilize, amend the contracts that they have, get that money on the street so these people can be safe and not be evicted. So I'm asking, I'm begging for all those involved to make that happen. 
That is critical, just critical. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and you're welcome. To, to, the, to the old one from the 19th uh, point, uh, that is absolutely possible to do right now. Um, uh, it does not take an additional board bill or anything. That's possible to do right now uh, with some of the funding that we have in place. Again, we're still sitting on roughly $8 million from the last COVID relief funding uh, that's there at the center pot to be used uh, for that purpose. Uh, we could um, work to, um, uh, the executive branch could work with the Affordable Housing Trust Fund uh, with just interim, uh, you know, agreements like the other one from 19 said, extending the contracts of the, of the entities that are helping with the review process. And that could be refunded uh, once these funds become available, the new COVID funding becomes available. Let me ask the committee for consensus. Um, I do want to have a meeting on June 30th. Would you prefer a day meeting, afternoon meeting, or evening meeting? Evening. Let's go around. Uh, Alderman Davis. Day meeting. Day. Alderman Cone. Evening. Evening. Alderman Kotar. I prefer a day meeting. Day meeting. Alderman Pam Boyd. A day meeting. Okay, hey, Alderman Hoppin, you can chat. Day your preference. Day, okay, I heard that. Alderman uh, Martin. A uh, day, thank you. Okay, Alderman Narayan. This was for the 29th or the 30th? The 30th, the 30th. Uh, a, a day works. I think that Parks has a meeting scheduled at 9 a.m. Okay, yeah, I'll have to see if anybody have anything scheduled and I'll just go after them. Because I know I'll have my regular schedules for nine o'clock, and I know other people have theirs regular scheduled day. So I'll find out exactly what time. Uh, Evans, uh, Old Woman Evans. Day. Okay. okay, so day it is. So we're trying to have a day meeting after other meetings that are previously scheduled for June uh, 30th. I'll get with the clerk and see what's open. And then we'll get that on the calendar letter for next week. So we will have um, a meeting this Thursday. June 24th at 6 p.m. We will have the next meeting June 29th at 9 a.m. and June 30th to be determined. Chairman Boyd. Yes. Just to let you know, the only meeting for Thursday, June 30th is 9 a.m. We can't do an evening meeting? No, we no, this is June 30th. This oh, is I'm sorry. June 30th. Yes, June 30. sir. Oh. That's, so what I'm 9 that's, that's the only meeting. meeting for that day at 9. Well, mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's do 10 a.m. then. 10. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. President, you want to wrap it up? And then we're going to go ahead and adjourn. Yeah, I just want to thank, again, just one more time, thank everyone uh, for attendance and thank you for um, uh, the engaging discussion and um, also look forward to moving forward the process. We have, um, uh, you know, and then it's also important to remember that there's nearly $8 million sitting in an account for, 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 uh, for uh, rental and mortgage assistance and things of that nature right now. Uh, we allocated those funds through our stimulus funding. It will not go away. It's there because it's been allocated. Uh, the, uh, so, Part of what can be doing, you know, the administration can be doing right now is working with the outside partners to expedite uh, the approval process of anybody that's still sitting there and um, work to do any interim agreement uh, with the outside entities that's, that's working uh, to, uh, that we are relying on helping us to approve uh, the uh, rental assistance contract. So, yeah, and, uh, thanks, thanks everybody. I'm looking forward to an engaging time to get this uh, this um, allocated and on the way. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members of the committee. The HUDS committee is officially adjourned.